Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the 3D game programming tutorial series. Last time, we got the basic backend for input. Now we can determine if we are in fact pressing something, and our game can respond to it. For example, if we're holding a key down, any key at all, then our monkey head will start rotating. If we release all the keys, the monkey head will stop rotating and so forth and so on. It's actually more amusing than I'd expect to play with, but you know, it's definitely not a game yet. We'd want a more robust input system for making a game. We want to be able to, say, control individual monkey heads. We want to be able to map that to specific keys. How do we do this? How can we make an input management system that's robust enough for our game? That is the topic of this video. Let's get to it. So, here we are inside the source code. How do we make a game input management system? That's a really vague and abstract sort of goal, isn't it? So for the purpose of this particular video, let's say our goal is to move the monkey head up and down with some control. Now the way I see it, that goal is actually sort of two problems mixed together. There's the problem of how do I control the monkey head? Is it controlled by WASD controls, arrow keys, gamepad, the mouse? Is it controlled by some sort of like recorded replay of inputs? You know, so that's one issue. And the other issue is what is the monkey supposed to do in response to that control, whatever it is? So we're going to need some sort of abstraction to separate that. So that'll be the first thing we do. I'm going to create an input control.hpp. Yeah, I'm going to pragma once. And yeah, we're just going to create a class. And this class is going to represent what the monkey does in response to the control. And our input system is going to be essentially boiled down to how do I update all the input controls that our game has to offer. So it's a nice easy way to separate these two problems, and it makes the task of designing our game input management system a whole lot easier, because all of a sudden, it doesn't have to care about 98% of the game. It just has to care about the input controls and making sure they're in the correct state every single frame, reflecting what the game needs to do in response to whatever input is being put in. So. This is going to need just a single field. It'll be a float that I'm just going to call amount. This is how much of a response this control needs. Very sort of abstract, I know, but it can represent a lot of things. This amount could be how much is the monkey head supposed to move up or down? And we can do them both a single float because floats have direction. This could be positive for positive motion, negative for negative motion. For, say, a jump button, this could be zero for don't jump and one for jump, you know? Or if we have, say, pressure-sensitive buttons because we're rich and fancy like that, we could even have, say, like, half amount to represent do a tiny jump as opposed to do a big, huge jump. So, you know, a little abstract, but this represents just about everything we could care about for how the game should respond to an input. As far as our constructor, I'm just going to create a really straightforward constructor. In fact, I'm not even going to bother putting it in its own file. I'm just going to make it an inline constructor because I pasted weirdly. My, I'm sorry, one moment. <laughs> I'm Oh dear. I'm having a slight input malfunction, but that's okay. But yeah, all it's going to do is it's just going to set amount to zero. That is all this is going to do. So yeah, this is going to be inline. So cool, we have our constructor. And the other thing is we need a void method to set amount. Or really, I shouldn't even need to set, just add the amount. So float amount to add. And there we go. And finally, we're going to need a function get amount. Now you might wonder why we're doing a separate function rather than just say make amount a public field. And the reason is these are not quite quite as straightforward as they might first seem. Well, okay, to be fair, add amount is exactly as straightforward as it first seems. It's just going to be to take input control, 
paste it there and I'm gonna say amount plus equals amount to add there we go also going to make this in line so there you go but get amounts gonna be a little bit trickier because I'm not going to represent magnitude beyond a range of 1 to negative 1 with this. That's just a design decision. There's no reason you couldn't, say, have input control be any value in the flow field, but I'm just interested in keeping the amount between negative 1 and positive 1. So even if the actual amount is greater than, say, 1, getting it should still read 1. So for input control get amount, I'm going to return math clamp amount between negative 1 and positive 1. And this also means I'm going to need to include, I'm pretty sure I have a math.h, don't I? Under math? Yeah, I do. Math slash math.hpp. There we go. I don't think I have, yeah, I don't think I have a simpler math. Okay. Just making sure. And, oh yeah, this should also be inline because, well, yeah. And, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is all we need. So this is going to be our final input control system. And yeah, this is how our game is going to respond to whatever the input is. Doesn't care how it gets to be what it is, just cares this is how the game should react to input at this particular moment in time. So, as I hinted at, the next task is going to be creating one of these application event handlers that can update all the input controls, well, in response to input. So actually, small error here, I put a semicolon when I should put parentheses because this is actually a method definition. Sorry about that. But uh, everything else appears to be okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close this. And I'm going to create a new class, I'm going to call it game, sure, event handler.hpp. And again, practical once. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and go to core, iApplication Event Handler. I'm going to copy and paste. So this is going to be our base. But of course, we're going to rename it. It's now Game Event Handler. And it's going to. Whoops. The now copy and sign is going to be for Game Event Handler. And it's going to extend from public iApplication Event Handler, which also means we're going to now need to include core slash iApplication event handler dot hpp there we go now we have our game event handler we're still not going to do mu too much in the constructor and destructor so i'm not worried about that we can go ahead and replace these method declarations with semicolons though because we are going to define just about all of these except for maybe mouse move i don't have anything to do with this just yet, though of course we will eventually handle it. So the big thing here though is the input control. How do we attach input controls to this? So I mean that all starts of course with just including input control.hpp. And what we really want to do is we want to have a method called say add key control. This will take in some key code and it'll take in some input control reference that will be updated, well, depending on that key control. So I'm just going to go ahead and call this input control. So yeah, so say if we press A key, this input control will be set to 1. If we release A key, it will be set to 0. Something like that. And because we're doing it like this, the input control doesn't have to care that it's being controlled by a key as opposed to, say, a mouse button, or a joystick, or a replay, or anything else that you would care about. One more thing though, just to be fancy, is I'm going to add a weight to it, which is going to default to zero. Sorry, not zero. One. So this way, for instance, we could have multiple buttons controlling the same thing, and, well, I mean, I, I guess the obvious thing is you could have one button do more of the control than the other, and both of them is even more, which, I, I don't know, don't know where you'd use that, but it could be an interesting mechanic. But the real thing is so that we can set the weight to be negative. So this button makes you, say, have forward motion. This button makes you have negative motion. And we only need one input control for that. So that's the big thing. So I'm also going to have mouse control, which oops, does the same sort of thing, except has a mouse button. 
And there you go. That's really the methods we want. So that all boils down to now how do we implement these. The big thing we're going to need is a data structure to keep track of all these input controls and what buttons map to them and with what weights. So to do that, I'm going to include some of our data structures. So under data structures, I'm going to include map.hpp, and I'm also going to include array.hpp. And these are just wrappers for std map and std vector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a map. It's going to map an unsigned 32-bit integer that will represent the key code or mouse button. So I can look up for a given key or mouse button with an array of std pair. So an array of pairs of floats for the weight and input control references for the input control. And this is our data structure. It's a little bit of an odd data structure to wrap your head around because it's mapping key codes to basically a list of pairs of floats and input controls. But once you get your head around it, it's actually really exactly what we want. And I think it'll make more sense once we start using it. So I'm just going to call this inputs. So let's go ahead and let's start implementing this. I'm going to create game event handler cpp and I'm going to shuffle this slightly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all these functions and I'm going to just really set them up with a basic boilerplate. Your IDE may have a way to do this automatically. I'm doing it by hand because, well, I'm just that kind of person. So deal with it. As you can see, it doesn't really take any time, so, you know, no big deal. So other than that, we do need to include the header, so game event handler .hpp. We also need to get rid of the virtual function keyword. And from here, we can pretty much just start implementing. So I'm going to start by implementing add key control, sure. So what I'm going to do is this is going to add a pair of input control and weights into our known inputs. So for our inputs, I'm going to look up the key code. And so this is going to give me an array of pairs of floats and input controls mapped to that particular key code. And from there, I'm going to push back. Yeah, pretty much just a new pair of input controls and weights. So std pair of, yeah, I'm going to need to copy this. And it's just going to take in weight and input control. There you go. So that's all it does. Now we have, we are aware of a new key control. Mouse control. We're going to do something very similar. In fact, I'm going to copy and paste except we're going to add something to the key code because otherwise I mean, there's no guarantee that mouse button and key code won't have like number two represents say the right mouse button and two represents some key on the keyboard. So we're going to, need to add an offset to this so that it's just not in the same range as keys. So I'm going to define mouse offset and for now I'm just going to set it to an arbitrary 1024 in a few minutes, we're going to have a more reasonable basis for this, but for now we're just going to set 1024 just until we have a better way to set this. So there we go. So now that we've seen how to add things to this data structure, I'd like to talk more about how this data structure works and why specifically we're using this data structure as opposed to any other of the many possible ways we could be handling input. So to start, it's a map of keys to something. Sure, we know that something is an array of pairs, but let's forget about that for a moment. We don't care what it's a mapping to. We're using a map as the foundation. Why a map? Why not anything else? The simple reason is 
Well, really demonstrated by this. If we add keys like we just showed, we have W to something, D to something else, A to something else, etc. We have W, D, A, and S, and those are the only inputs the game responds to. So this is a combination of simplicity and efficiency. It's efficient because our program never cares about any of the other keys or inputs beyond precisely the ones that the game uses. And it's also simple for really the same reason. We can easily access this is what W controls. Nice and simple. This is what D controls. Nice and simple. So that's why we're doing a map and not an array or anything else. So, like I said, this map is to something. It's to an array of pairs. Why that? Well, first off, to give you a visual, it looks something like this. This is the pair. This is the next pair. If we had more pairs, they'd be adding on. Why an array of pairs? Well, the reason we're doing a pair, as I hinted at earlier, is so that each input controller can have a different weight. I can have W on, say, this in input controller with weight 1, and S on the same input controller with weight negative 1. And this would be useful, for instance, in the case of vertical movement. W that adds positive vertical motion, S adds negative vertical motion. I press W, I add positive vertical motion, aka going up. I press S, negative vertical motion, aka going down. And even better, if I press them both, because they are weights and we're summing, 1 plus negative 1 is 0, so if I press both positive and negative vertical motion, I get nothing. It's a very nice and graceful way to handle these, and I only need a single input controller yeah, input control, just for that. So that's why we have pairs with weights. And last question is, why an array? Why would we care about having more than one control on the same key? Well, really, that's the very reason. What if we do need the control to be more than one thing? W's vertical motion, and it's also part of a different controller, that is, say, a secret cheat combo. We press W and something else and we get invincibility or some other really cheap, overpowered thing that lets us breeze through the game. This lets us easily do that. It, no special extra consideration required. Same code that works for one works for however many things we could possibly want on any single key. So that's why we're using this particular data structure, and hopefully this is giving you an idea of how it works. If we update the W key, we update everything. That same code works no matter how many things are being controlled by W. And all of these still don't have to control that they are being controlled by the W key. They could be controlled by anything as far as they're concerned. So it's separation, it's simplicity, it's easily expandable. There's just a lot of different advantages to it, and it makes for ultimately a pretty elegant input system, even if the data structure itself might raise a few eyebrows as the first time you see it. So hopefully that clears the, any questions up about the data structure. That's all I, what I wanted to say. But that still leaves the question, yeah, we have the data structure, we can add things to it. How do we process inputs with it? How can we actually use this to make control for the game? Find out next time! I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned, and I will see you in the next video.